right, this is section 3.1. We're going to start off by checking to see if a coordinate pair is a solution to a system of equations. That means more than one equation. So in number one, we're checking to see if the coordinate pair 2, 1 works or is a solution in both equations. And to be a solution to a system, it has to be a solution to each and all equations in the system. So we're going to substitute 2 in for x, right, because x is 2 and 1 for y, and see what we get here. So for this first equation, I'm going to do this in red. x is 2, y is 1. Everything else you bring down. This is 2 times y, so this becomes 2 times 1 equals 4. Does this actually equal 4? Well, we get 2 plus 2 times 1 is 2. Yeah, it's going to work out 4 equals 4, so that's a solution. Now, it doesn't mean that 2, 1 is a solution to the system until it also checks out for the other equation. So I'm going to do the other equation in blue here. 3 times 2 minus 1 is that 5. So I get 6 minus 1. That equals 5. So check. Yes, 2 comma 1 is a solution to the system. Let's try it again over here with this coordinate pair. Negative 3 is our x, 5 is our y, so let's plug it into the first equation. 3 times negative 3 minus 7 times 5. Does that equal negative 34? I don't think so. This gets me negative 9. And then I'm going to chop slash right here. So plus a negative 7. When I take negative 7 times 5, I get negative 35. And when I add those two numbers together, I get way lower than negative 34. So right now, because it does not work in one of the equations, no, negative 3, 5 is not a solution to the system. Lastly, we're trying negative 1 comma 2. Let's try it first in the top equation. So 4 times negative 1 plus 5 times 2. Does that equal 6? I think it will. You get negative 4. Remember, you're simplifying using your order of operations or just plug it into one of our fancy calculators on the wall, and it knows the order of operations as well. You get 6, and it's supposed to equal 6, so that's awesome. So, so far it is a solution to that equation, but to be a solution to the system, it has to work in all equations here. So, let's keep going. Substituting negative 1 in for x and 2 for y. I get negative 7 plus 2. Does that equal 5? Oh, careful. If you think it does, be careful. You're hoping too hard. That's negative 7 plus 2. That's a negative 5. And negative 5 is not equal to positive 5. One's like having $5 in your pocket. One's like owing someone $5. It's not equivalent. So no, negative 1 comma 2 is not, not a solution to the system. It is to the first equation, but not to both. So it's, or not to the second, so it's not a solution to the system. All right, let's try getting solutions to systems of equations by graphing lines. That's one of the three main ways to do it. Especially if I see any two equations that are in slope-intercept form, I'm like, oh yeah, that's easy to graph, this is easy to graph, and then you just find their intersection. So let's do this. So the first equation has a y-intercept of negative 6, and then our slope is up 5, right 6. Up 5, right 6. And then from the y-intercept, I can also go down 5 and left 6. Something like that. Might need to use a straight edge on this one, folks, uh, because it's a pretty big graph. And also, finding the intersection, you want to be exact. So this is the one place, at least in my class, where I usually tell people generally just to sketch the line. Once you have the dot, sketch it. Here, you might want to do more. Careful with your slope here. It's a negative slope. That negative goes on top. So it's like a negative four thirds. You're going down four for your eyes into the right three. And as you read slopes, you read them from left to right. So you should be going in this general direction down as you go to the right. So down four, right three. Something like that.
that down four right three. Hey, boom shakalaka. I could keep graphing the lines. I screwed that one up down four right three. But really, folks, why I'm excited is the solution to the system is where the lines intersect. So I just found an intersection. I just found the solution to the equation. It's at six comma negative one. And if this is a test, summative, it's a big deal. I could take that coordinate pair, six comma negative one, and substitute it in for x here and make sure I get negative one out for y. And I could take the negative six and plug it in, or sorry, the positive six and plug it in here for x and make sure I get negative one out for y. Next equation, y-intercept is negative eight. Slope is one. So I'm going up one, right one. Should just make a perfect diagonal here. And I should intersect that positive eight. Oh boy, yeah. There we go. And I could buzz the line. I'm gonna hold off. So here the y-intercept is positive eight and the slope is negative three. So going down three, right one. Down three, right one, down three, right one, down three, right one, down three, right one. <gasps> Glorious. Look at the intersection. That is the solution to the systems of equations and that intersection of the two lines occurs at four comma negative four. That is the solution to the system. Again, you could plug it back into each equation and see that it actually makes the equation true. It should work. Number six, eh, number six, I might actually typically use a system called substitution where I take this that is equal to y and plug it in for y. So I have an equation with just x's and numbers. And I'm not being like impartial to x's. I don't like them more than y's, but I would have an equation that has one variable. We're going to talk about that more tomorrow. The directions do say to solve it by graphing. And the second equation is easy to solve, or easy to graph, excuse me, but the second one, for many of you, you like to get it in slope-intercept form, so you need to solve for y. You need to get y by itself. First, start by undoing. I just did a little chop slash there. That's actually the first thing I should do before I start worrying about undoing. Just thinking about what's being done to x, or excuse me, what's being done to y, because we're trying to get y by itself, so it's in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus p. Chop slash here, y is getting multiplied by negative 3. That minus sign affects the thing after it, so it's a negative 3. And then we're to the y, we are also adding 5x. Undo adding first by subtracting. Make sure you bring down a negative 3y. So negative 3y equals negative 5x, and that 21 is positive, so plus 21. Now divide by negative 3. We don't just want to undo multiplying by 3, we want to undo it multiplying by a negative 3. So our new final equation here is the negatives cancel out, the threes cancel out, y equals 5 thirds x minus 7, or plus negative 7. Either way, for this equation, my y-intercept is at negative 7, low, negative 7. I'm going up 5, right 3. Up 5, right 3. Up 5, right 3. I'm going to stop there. That's probably enough. So far, my points have been intersecting right on dots, so I'm just going to keep the dots for right now. And if I need to do a solid line, I will. Y-intercept of the highlighted and yellow equation is 1. I'm going up 5 and right 3. Boom. Right 3. Up 5, right 3. Huh. This whole up 5 and right 3 thing has got me kind of worried. Because, wasn't I going up 5 and right 3 for this equation as well, too? So you know, I was kind of waiting for them to come together at some point to get closer and closer. But if I keep going up 5 and right 3 each time for the red dots, or the first line, and I keep going up 5 and right 3 for the green line, that means they're never going to get closer and closer. They're going to be parallel. 
And if they're parallel, unless they're right on top of each other, which they are not, uh, if they're parallel, they're never going to touch. Not going to touch. And the solution is where they touch, where they intersect. So that means, in this case, there is no solution. Wah, wah. Alrighty. Both of these are in slope intercept, or, sorry, in standard form. You know, the funny thing about standard form is you can, now well, this one's going to be tough to show. Actually, they're both tough to show. So yes, we actually should solve for y. Put your x's first. It's a negative x, and it's a positive 14. Now divide by 2. So my slope is negative 1 half. My y-intercept is 7. So y-intercept is 7. Down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. So on, so forth. I was going to calculate the x and y-intercepts. Um, and I calculated that the when y is 0, x is 14, which would be right there. But then it gets hairy trying to graph a straight line between um, a dot or with a dot that's not on the graph. Yeah, you can always do that. Like here, I know my y-intercept. When x is 0, the y-intercept is negative 2. Boom. But here you get a me uh, messy fraction for your x-intercept. So let's subtract 5x off to undo that. So minus 5x. So we get y equals negative 5x minus 2. So the y-intercept, as we said before, was negative 2. But now we go down 5, right 1. Down 5, right 1, down 5, right 1, mm, 5 plus 7 is 12. 5, left 1, up 5, left 1. Hmm, where's the intersection going to be? Well, if I continue the points from my first line, oh, that, oh yeah, remember the slope was down 1, right 2. So now I go up one, left two. See how that dot is in line with the other ones? So that is my solution, negative two, comma, positive eight. And again, you could check that really quick. Negative two plus two times eight, which is 16. Negative two plus 16 is 14. Over here, five times negative two is negative 10. Negative 10 plus y, which is eight. Negative 10 plus eight is negative two. It checks out. It's totally the solution. Hooray!